this is what happens when he shows himself to them. They get excited. They're enthused. But all of a sudden, Thomas comes to the house. And they said, Thomas, 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 Jesus is back. And Thomas said, no, nah, man. <laughs> no, nah, for real, for real. Jesus is back. Nah. I saw what happened. I saw what happened. Thomas says, I will not believe unless I see something. And biblical scholars have labeled Thomas because of his statement over the past centuries. And we don't call him Apostle Thomas. We label him by that moment. And we call him Doubting Thomas. Y'all don't know nobody like this, but I found out sometime in church, people will label you by your one moment. People will keep bringing up what you did and it was 10 years ago. But I need you to push somebody to tell them my past is my past. And so tonight, I didn't come to preach to the X generation. I didn't come to preach to the AD 33 generation, the day of Pentecost generation, AD 52. I come to preach to the Thomas generation tonight. You that have been numbered among the saints... But some things have happened in transition. There's some things that have happened in your life that seem like there's a contradiction. We judge Thomas, but you got to realize what Thomas saw just a few days ago. Thomas saw the crucifixion of everything he believed in. I'm talking to a generation that watched parents get divorced. And their only picture of stability were their parents and they found themselves having to choose between sides. A Thomas generation. A generation that held people in church to a high standard for you to only find out that some of the things they were telling you not to do, they were doing. A Thomas generation that had gotten so exhausted with church stuff that they've been trying to figure out how can I have God without doing church. Or maybe y'all ain't never been there before. I'm talking to a Thomas generation that they believed and we were taught that if you believe strong enough, everything you believe for will happen. But you prayed for somebody that was sick and you watched them die. We don't talk about that. And Thomas says, I, I'm, don't judge me, it's just where I am. I didn't grow up in church, I, I've been here. It's just where I am. That right now before I build up again to believe again, I've got to see something. No more am I just going by what a preacher said. I need to see something for myself. I didn't heard the testimony of the other apostles and the bishops that laid hands on somebody and they got healed and somebody died and they got resurrected. But now I'm at a place, if I'm going to carry this gospel, I got to see it for myself. I got some chains in my life that got to be broken. I got some yokes that I need to be destroyed. Thomas, Thomas, Thomas said, it's just where I am. I, I, I do believe but help thou my, I, I, maybe you ain't never been there before. I know it sounds like a contradiction. Do you believe it or you don't believe? Some of us, we believe that God can do it, but we wonder, will he do it? And maybe you feel like because you were out of place and you didn't do what you're supposed to have done, that you have aborted God's plan for you. Now you got faith that God can do it for them, but he can't do it for me. Thomas. Thomas said, I'm sorry, I, I, can't, I can't afford, I can't afford to build up. I, I go to church, I, I feel in my space, I do what I'm supposed to do. But if I'm going to step out any further than where I am, I'm just at a place I got to see something. And let me tell you something, why y'all looking at Thomas? He said, oh, down Thomas, down Thomas. The Bible said that Jesus cared enough about Thomas. <laughs> I'm 
so glad that when I was at a low place, maybe y'all ain't never been there, but have you ever been in a low place since you've been saved? That everything you were looking at looked nothing like what God promised you. To the point, some of us says, I wish I would have never had a vision. I wish I would have never had a dream. I wish somebody had never prophesied to me. I wish I never wrote down this dream I had in this devotional book. Because now what I'm looking like looks nothing like what God promised me. And it's fooling with my flesh. It's fooling with my emotions. There's somebody here tonight, you're stuck between Malachi and Matthew. And God ain't saying nothing. There used to be a time where when you turn on the TV, it was a confirmation. Every time you went to church, there was a confirmation. Your best friend, your BFF would text you and send you an emoticon. There was a confirmation. But now you're going through a silent time. Oh, God. What do you do when it seems like the heavens are silent? Oh, glory be to God. What do you do that when he, you thought he was going to come in and ride into victory through Jerusalem, but last time you looked up, your dream was being crucified. What? What do you do? What do you do? Thomas says, I want to believe. I want to I wanna believe. I want to believe. But I'm just at a place that I, I got to see something. Man. I got I got I'm just at a place right now. And the truth is, who can we be honest with? Who can we be honest with without them trying to cast the demon out of us? <laughs> really? Who, who, who can you... Who can you really be able to say, you know what? I'm going to church tonight, but I really don't feel it. <laughs> I'm going to prayer tonight, <laughs> but I really don't want to. Who can you be honest with and says, you know what? Pray for me because this time my flesh want to say yes. Man, I've been doing, I haven't been perfect. But I've tried to do right. And don't nothing mess with Thomas' generation than to see folk that's out in the world that ain't trying to live nothing and look like they got it easier than you. Anybody ever felt that way? Did it make you feel some kind of way? They got the car and they still in high school and you out of high school and you in college, you still ain't got no ride. You didn't tithe, you didn't gave, you didn't went to the youth meetings. Somebody didn't did try, try to be pure. They didn't have their wedding. And there you is in somebody else's wedding. Thomas says, I'm just at a place before I invest any more time. I need to see something. But Jesus cared enough about. Oh, There's somebody tonight, you at a low place. And you can't be honest with everybody around you because some of those people depend on you. But God cares enough about you that in the midst of your valley of indecision and unbelief the Bible says here come Jesus walking through the wall walking through the barrier because some of us have put up so many barriers and here comes Jesus walking through a barrier to get to Thomas and say here let me show you something. 